Hey there, welcome to today's episode. Apologies, it's going to be a live unedited session, but I'm feeling a little under the weather, so one, my voice maybe sound a little bit snotty. Also, the other thing is that it's a noisy day again in London, so apologies for background noise in advance. Just wanted us to take a look at the new update from Koala Sampler, and also just uh, answer the question, can the able to move be used as a control surface for Koala Sampler? The simple answer for that, and we're going to answer it first, is no, it can't. But there is an interesting take on that. The reason for that being is that when I tried it this morning, the very first thing that I did was plug this in because it was my video for the day was can we use this as a control surface? I didn't realize the Koala Sampler update had been released. So pre-update, I could map this, but only in this Connect Live with USB-C mode, which is the controller mode for Ableton Live. When you turn Ableton Live on, this thing suddenly springs into life and all the lights show up. And it is a fantastic controller for Ableton, as you would expect. But in this particular mode with the pads all gray, nothing lit up, but I could MIDI map it when I was inside of the settings with Koala and we went to map MIDI. This was working. I know that because 73, 74, some of these encoders, they are the ones from this particular controller. It was working this morning until I did the Koala sampler update and now it's completely broke. It was already kind of broke in my opinion because this was the only mode. I couldn't do it in standalone mode. I've tried that. I've tried the MIDI settings. I know people are going to start asking me questions about that, but this is set with MIDI out only. On this particular device, you've only got a couple of options. You have MIDI out, MIDI in. I don't think you can even run them at the same time. I think you're choosing one or the other. And then you can send MIDI out for the individual four tracks, even trying it in that mode, but nothing from standalone. If I boot this up, in fact, I'll show you it. Let's just do it for the sake of it. If I load up this blank template, again, if I come to map here, I would be expecting to see some changes on the pads, something triggering that MIDI. It doesn't work. You can check my settings as well, just quickly. Set to MIDI out, I'm getting nothing. MIDI channels I've checked, cables I've checked, everything double checked. The only way I had it working briefly before the update was to come back out of this and have it in the control live mode. But you got no visual feedback. This is what it looked like even when it was mapping. And again, you'll see it's not mapping anything now. We have no lights. We have nothing from the device. So it's pretty uninspiring, even though technically you could map 32 pads, which was kind of cool. The encoders were working. The buttons were mapping this morning. So technically, yes, it worked. But this is just so dull when nothing lights up. We got no feedback from the pads or anything. The SP404 Mark II works seamlessly with Koala. It's a much better choice. I know some of you are probably just expecting that maybe if you bought and able to move to mess around with it, it would be a nice bonus. Yes, it would be. And who knows, maybe another, you know, Koala sampler update will fix that. Suddenly this will work again. It definitely stopped working after the update. It's very strange. But if you're just looking for a dedicated MIDI controller for Koala sampler, an Akai MPD, the little Timu MVave thing that I bought as well was a fantastic little controller for this. Save you money. This is far too expensive to be used as a MIDI controller for Koala. It's my take on it anyway. I'm going to stop the mapping. Let's run through the options here, the new update options. Uh, let's open this up. I've got them listed. You can now save to iCloud Drive. The reason I'm doing this is because I can't remember them all. But if you go to save or save as, you'll notice you can now save to the iCloud. Pretty self-explanatory, but it is there. That's a good option. The next one, tap, uh, tempo tap could generate infinite tempos if the taps were generated fast. My neighbor's dog is barking like a maniac. It's driving me crazy. Yes. So I'm not sure about that. It sounds like a bug fix. It sounds like when you were inside of sequence here and you were tapping tempo, if you were kind of going wild with this thing and pressing it fast, I tried it before just to see if I could get it to do it. It must have been some kind of bug that was then randomly generating tempo. Um, the next one, resample from individual buses. I had to look. And so if you want to know where that is, it's inside of this main little menu here, because when you boot up the device, normally it's in microphone. I was looking at the buses. I was trying to work out how you just directly resample. It's here. You select resample. And then this is set to main, but you'll notice a little drop down. I can then resample from the buses. My argument there, though, is that this doesn't feel any quicker than simply just being in perform mode and doing something like this. I tried it. You would just solo this and then press resample and I can do it that way. I'm not really sure why that was necessary. Some people in the comments let me know that maybe I'm missing a trick there, but feels about the same kind of speed to do it either way. The next thing, what have we got here? 
fix problems with dragging fingers off buttons and then back onto them. Again, I tested it. I couldn't get it to work. But of course, if it's a bug fix and it's now being fixed, then it's fixed. I never had any problems with it personally. Holding clear and tapping keyboard button when in keyboard mode will clear the notes for the current pad. That one, I actually think is quite useful. Let's go back into Koala Sampler. Um, I can show you that with, uh, you need to select something. So in sequencing mode, you've got this keyboard mode for when you're playing samples chromatically. Let's say we chose some hi-hats and we wanted to mess around with those. Start with a blank sequence. If I just put a bunch of notes in wherever, they're inside of the sequence, we can close that. When you hold clear, this flashes and you can clear all of those selected notes. That is quite handy because if you had your sequence and you've got your kick drums laid out, your hi-hats, your snares, bunch of sample chops, whatever, anything that could be in here, if you only want to select one of those elements and delete them, sure, you can still do it here because you've always been able to just drag them and do it that way. But maybe it would be slightly quicker to just select whichever pad because when the keyboard mode is selected, if you change a pad like this, it just moves over. So with this kick drum in particular, if I had a bunch of those in the sequence, I could just clear them out. I don't think it's a huge time saver, but it's something that people might find useful. What else have we got? And now open tools menu just by dragging up and down on tools rather than having to tap. That one, <laughs> I've tested this. Let's go to edit. I'm only laughing because I do find this a little bit strange. So yeah, we used to tap the tool menu, which you still can, and then select what you want. Now you can drag it and I guess you can just kind of select up and down. I don't know how lazy we have to be to feel that like tapping this and then just selecting one of these options was so painful that we really need a drag to just kind of do it. But if you think that microsecond is going to make your workflow much better, uh, more power to you. I really don't know why we got that. Um, you can let me know again in the comments if you if people have been crying out for that. Underneath, right, okay, there is now a cog on the song info panel that opens up a menu of song related options. This one, I've got a feeling, and you can let me know again in the comments, is when we go to load, we get our list of songs, which makes sense. I think maybe if you're on a mobile device, you see a cog. I don't remember this being here before, but it's been a little while since I messed around with Koala Sampler. So sort file size, you can sort, you know, alphabetically and sort by recent. I've got a feeling that's what that's referring to. However, when you're on a mobile, you know, an iPad like this, I see this drop down tab rather than a cog. I think that's what we're looking at because I can't see a cog anywhere else. I've looked at this song info. Please let me know in the comments if I'm missing a trick. I'll go back over it at some other point, but that's what I'm assuming that is. The next one, what have we got here? If pad has slash in the label, it would crash export all samples because it incorporated it blindly into the file making a directory. So I'm assuming, yeah, if you were putting slashes into your titles there, you would get some kind of crash. Um, again, it's been fixed as a bug, so don't need to look at that. Fixed swing MIDI mapping. Again, never noticed a problem with swing MIDI mapping, but there's obviously been something that's been fixed. We don't really need to cover that. This one also quite interesting. Emojis are rendered monochromatically in text labels like song names, bus names and pad labels. I've never tried to put an emoji onto a pad, but we could try that just for the sake of it. I had this in mind. Never. Yeah, I never thought about putting an emoji in here for anything, not even in my song names and titles. I just don't really use emojis much. Um, but let's select a pad. Let's just use one that's got no sound on it. Uh, if we go to edit, you can rename that pad, right? Somewhere label. So I guess if we put an emoji in here, a little smiley face, and we just click OK. All right, so it shows up there as like this little icon. I'm assuming before, and again, you guys can let me know, did that just show up like a regular emoji? Never tried to put an emoji on a pad or a song name, so wouldn't know, but I guess now that looks better. <laughs> I've no idea. So I have to admit this, uh, you know, Set of updates for Koala Sampler has got me a little bit baffled. This one in particular, I really don't know what the problem is with tapping twice on the screen. I think we're just getting so lazy if that's the case. But maybe there's another reason. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm missing something. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers it. I don't want to make this episode any longer. Feeling a little poorly, so I'm going to go and rest for the rest of the day. But yeah, this is what we have. Some useful things. Some things, as I've made my feelings clear, not so useful. The one thing I was absolutely hoping for, and I'm going to say it again, just in case 
uh, you know, we get the koala sampler paying attention, uh, is that what we really need is the ability to press edit, hold all of our samples. I can pitch them now, which is fantastic. I can pitch multiple samples. I need that to stay held like that, though, until I tell it to release. The reason for that being, if I want to pitch a bunch of samples together, I still want to be able to play them on the pads together like this whilst I'm trying the different pitches. So I want to be able to pitch and just keep playing all the pads. So just so that I can see what that sounds like. But when I press a pad to audition it, it deselects everything and I then have to select everything again. It's not the end of the world. I know that. But why we can't just have this as like a little hold function so that I can pitch all of these and still be auditioning them and then release them at the end. That's what I was really hoping for in the Koala update. Unfortunately, we haven't seen it again, but who knows? I keep my fingers crossed. I live in hope. And uh, yeah, I'm going to sign off. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care.